Hi, I'm Larry Kitchen. I'm the Visual Arts Chairman at Kilgore College, and I want to talk to you for a minute or two about basic painting techniques. We're going to start off with this face that you see behind me on this oil on canvas that I'm working on. When I begin to paint a particular area in a, in a work, I think about some very fundamental things, and those are, one, one of those things is values. Now, a value is a light or darkness of a color. And so I try to break all, all areas down into three basic values, a highlight, a midtone, and a shadow. And so if we think about those fundamentals when we look at a head shape, then it will simplify the process for us. Now, um, what I wanted to start off with is to set this cube right by or cube, this circle right beside this head. I'm going to just tape it on here for simplicity purposes, and I think you can see this circle that's there. Now, if I think in three, in three values for this, um, I think it will help, and then that translates to, to painting this head. So uh, in my hand, I've got a palette knife. I'm going to start with uh, a nice section of a uh, glob of white and then I'm going to paint this in black and white so it'll be simpler to to see as, as I go through this. White is the is the weaker of the colors that are on my palette and black is the stronger so I'm going to take just a little bit of, of black over here and um, with quite a bit of, of white I can end up with with a value that that is fair, still fairly dark And you'll notice that it's, uh, this is kind of, this is pretty stiff. I'm going to add a little bit more white into it and work over here to more of a middle value. And then maybe a little bit more black over on this end to get my shadow value. It's much like uh, mixing up batter for a cake. Now without any turpentine or dryer in this, it would take, it would take oil paint quite a while to dry. So uh, there are a couple of dryers I mix in. One is this liquid, another is the turpenoid. The liquid is a, is a product that sometimes I'll just put it on my palette and dip out of that like, like oil paint, like any other paint. And I'm going to use this uh, four, number four filbert uh, to paint with. So now that I've got some piles of paints out there, I'll set my palette knife aside. I'm going to lay in a little bit of turpentine, turpenoid, and a little bit of this. And I always start with my mid-tone. So my, my circle, my sphere, is going to be a mid-value gray, like so. And I'm just going to lay it, lay it in there. And when I, when I lay these paints in, um, you'll notice that, you know, most painting, you don't have to uh, get down to the, to holding the brush real tight when you're, when you're creating this. You, you can develop a, you know, a fairly steady hand holding, holding the paintbrush, you know, at a pretty good distance. And that actually helps you because ergonomically, uh, you won't be straining your shoulder holding holding the paintbrush up like this and doing your small noodles. If you can get used to an L shape right here and holding, holding your brush for the most part uh, out here in front of you. Now I'm gonna load, I'm gonna load this brush up and and uh, hit hit this edge a little bit more careful and come around there slowly. And I can stay pretty close to the to the line that I've drawn there already. By the way, I guess I didn't mention, how do you get that circle? I took uh, the top of a can and just, you know, laid in a, laid in that circle. And there's a pretty good, pretty good edge. And that's a, a middle value of, of gray. Now, I, I don't have, uh, I don't have a sphere memorized, by the way, so you might wonder, what is he looking at? Is he looking at something off camera or whatever? Over here on, on the right, I've got a laptop with 
with a photo of a sphere lit um, that, that I can refer to. I won't have to look at this a whole lot because I've, I've painted circles a pretty good bit. So I know the direction it's going through knowledge, uh, past experience. But whether you're looking at an actual object or a photograph, you should have some reference close at hand on all painting. Now, that brings up another point also. Um, there is a combination of observation and knowledge that all painters use. When you look at something and observe it and lay down exactly what you're seeing, uh, you're probably painting pretty well. And the Impressionists felt like observation is very, very important. They wanted to be on the scene to see what the light does on, you know, in the world, and they wanted to reproduce that with good, clean brush strokes. But as you paint more and more, you build up knowledge. You get to the point where you can paint certain things because you remember what light does to that object. And so the combination of those two will make you a better painter. So work both on your observation skills and your knowledge base as you go through. Well, I've got uh, basically my mid-tone. And you remember uh, I said, you know, we're going to work in three values. So here's an M, so you can remember that. Now, on this, the shadow is laid, I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not, but the shadow is, is cast this direction. And uh, so I'm gonna, I'll just roughly lay this in so we remember that, you know, the shadow is casting that way. So if I projected a line from this outer edge up here, it's gonna tell me generally that the light is coming from this direction, coming down toward the object. So because of, because of that, we can pick out where the highlight's going to be. If the light's coming down here, it's going to hit right in here first. And then the shadow will be opposite of the highlighted area, obviously. So it'll be along this, this back edge. And so let's, let's lay in some of the shadow tone. Now, I mixed up this uh, dark value, and I'm going to lay it in like butter across this back edge, like so. Don't have to be real, real particular on that at this point. So sort of a crescent, crescent moon shape, basically, is what, is what light will do on this rounded circle. And I'm going to leave that there. It looks kind of blunt at this point, but uh, don't fear. I think I can work this thing out. Now on the other side, the opposite value where the, where the light is hitting, is the highlight. So I've got, uh, I'm not going to go with pure white. I'm going to use a little bit of my gray value and put some of this white in. I might mix a little bit of liquid in there so it flows a little bit easier. And then I'm going to generally in this area, I'm going to lay in a lighter, a lighter value there, like so. And then that value will move on up to a highlighted area right in this, right in this general area. Now with, with a little bit of uh, extra stroke, you're basically looking at now highlight, that's the high value. This is ranging from the highlight to that medium value, remember the M, and then this shadow area, which some people refer to that as the core shadow. That transition area between the core and the mid-tone, some people refer to as a half-tone because it's halfway. It's a tone that's halfway between the shadow and the mid-tone.